This is a mouse, obviously. But have you ever thought to yourself, wouldn't it be so much better if it was super light? Like moving this heavy thing around for hours every day definitely tires me out. Many people were saying that lighter mice reduce both fatigue and strain on your hand and wrist. But not only that, they also improve both accuracy and precision, especially for gaming. So in this video, I'm going to make the world's lightest wireless mouse to see for myself if all the hype around this is really true. We'll also compare our new lightweight mouse with my daily driver and see if the weight really does make a difference in gaming performance as well as for everyday use. It seems like lightweight gaming mouse has been trending a lot, and one of the main faces behind this trend is Optimum. He built his mouse targeting ergonomics so that your hand and wrist don't tire out after a long session of getting spanked on Valorant. Oh crap. Oh my god, that was the worst. He was able to reduce his wireless mouse weight to only 25 grams. And just to give you some reference, that's approximately the weight of two AAA batteries, or the weight of my glasses, or Nibble's brain. Now that was last year, but if we go back even further to three years ago, Marcin Plaza built a mouse that only weighs 17 grams, which is quite amazing. But unfortunately, it's not wireless, and you guys know how I feel about wired devices from my previous videos. Mmm, no, no, no. So in order to make the world's lightest mouse, we needed to be under 17 grams. To help us achieve this weight, we're gonna design our own custom circuit board to be as light as possible, but most importantly, we're gonna make it wireless. Before we start designing our lightweight mouse, we need some working hardware that we can use as a baseline for the project. Ugh, not this one. This one has a cable. Lucky for us, I found this. This is the Bamboo Labs mouse kit, which contains all the circuitry needed for a wireless mouse, along with the 2.4 GHz wireless USB dongle. Just as a quick test, we can hook it up to a battery. Damn it, they're too thick to fit in. I never had this issue before. Turn it on, connect the wireless USB dongle, and it's not working. Huh? Ah, forgot to place the LED lens for the sensor. Okay, it's looking good. I'm able to use the mouse, and most importantly, it has a scroll wheel, which is something that I'll use quite often for my daily activities. So this is great and all, but we need the schematic of this circuit board to create our own custom PCB with these components, because we want to make a smaller and lighter version than this one. But because Bamboo Lab doesn't provide the schematic, and I couldn't find anything online, this is where we need to do some reverse engineering to help us find out how the connections are made between each component, and to understand how the entire circuit works. We're going to steal the design. So the first thing we'll do is look at the chips used on this board. Starting from the battery connection, we see this tiny chip with capacitors and an inductor around it, and knowing that this this mouse uses a 1.5 volt battery. This is clearly a boost converter which turns the 1.5 volts to something around 3 volts that the rest of the chips can use. Next, we have the mouse sensor which if you remember from my last video, takes a whole bunch of photos and acts like a GPS system. It sort of works like the minimap that you see in pretty much any game. Now this mouse sensor connects to this microcontroller which is the brain of the entire system and uses a 24 megahertz crystal for its internal clock. And of course, all the switches for the left, middle, and right clicks as well as changing the DPI are all connected to the micro. Lastly, there's an antenna circuit which is used to wirelessly communicate with the USB dongle on the PC to send all the mouse click and movement information. Nice. But now we get to the boring part, where I need to confirm every connection between each individual component using a multimeter. For those of you unfamiliar, every time the multimeter beeps, it means there's a connection between the components. Alright, I'll be back in a bit. A few moments later. I finally finished checking all the pin and trace connections on the circuit board and came up with this very pretty schematic. You can see the boost converter providing power to the mouse sensor in the micro. We also have all the switches and the antenna circuit. Now while I was reverse engineering the mouse, I was in the zone, complete focus. But then the phone rang. Hello? No, I don't need cleaning services. No, I don't have computer viruses. What? You have photos of my cats naked? How much you want for them? Now that's what used to happen, where I would get constant spam calls and random texts. They're huge distractions, almost as bad as hearing that dreaded Teams notification. Thankfully, our sponsor Incogni has a solution. Incogni takes a proactive approach of removing your personal info from data brokers. And data brokers are bad news. They buy, sell, and trade your personal info without you knowing. On my first day of using Incogni, I checked your dashboard, which by the way, is super easy to use, and they removed my contact info from multiple companies, and the removal request constantly happens in the background. Now with the rise of AI and deepfake voices, these distractions can also turn dangerous and costly. So go to incogni.com slash justkim and use code justkim to get an exclusive offer of 60% off. That's incogni.com slash justkim and use code justkim or click the link below to take your personal data off the market. 
Now the last step for our reverse engineering project is to verify and confirm the schematic. We can do that by building a whole new wireless mouse reusing these components and reconnecting them on these protoboards. And of course, we'll be using this beautiful schematic to guide us through it. So the first step is to take off all the components from this PCB for prototyping. Come on, get off you stupid thing. To save us some time, let's use video magic to desolder them. And now, I'll attach them to our protoboards for testing. With the assembly complete, we now have our wireless mouse prototype. Look, this prototype ain't the prettiest in the world, but hey, at least it works. Kill me! I'm in constant pain! Now, using our verified schematic, I was able to make this with some important changes from the previous PCB. First, I replaced the alkaline batteries with a rechargeable one, but this meant I needed a new chip to handle power management, along with a USB connector for recharging the battery. And yes, the connector is USB-C and not micro-USB. You guys gave me so much hate for using micro-USB on my tiny keyboard. <laughs> The rest of the circuit is pretty much the same, where you can see the mouse sensor and the micro. There are also buttons for the left, middle, and right click, as well as for changing the DPI. And I've kept the same scroll wheel because that's super important for research. And if we compare the sizes, the original PCB is 73mm by 46mm, and the new one is 45mm by 42mm. Much smaller than the previous PCB, with a lot more holes too. Now I know I've previously used video magic to get things done, but for our new circuit board, our friends over at PCBWay manufactured the PCBs for us and did a fantastic job. Thanks PCBWay. Now that we have our new circuit boards, it's time to place these components onto the PCBs. Let's get soldering. Nice! By the way, not sure if you noticed in the clips, but I made the dumb mistake of soldering the micro switches backwards. It was not a fun time trying to fix it. Uh... Alright, let's turn this thing on and do some quick tests. Mouse seems to move and click properly, and our battery charges as well. This is looking great! Can't say the same for my drawing. Bruh. Now I'm not trying to fat shame, but this battery is thick. I mean, we're almost reaching 12 grams. Luckily, I ordered these small batteries from my previous project, and this tiny guy weighs less than a gram. Nice. I think the choice is clear. Perfect! It's under 7 grams. All that we're missing now are the hand supports for the mouse. And I think the design should look something like this, where we have the front support for the left and right clicks, as well as the ring finger, and the back support will cover our thumb and our pinky finger. This way, we don't need support material all around the mouse, and it'll reduce the weight as much as possible. Here's the 3D model of it, and it's ready to print. Three days later. So as you can see, I've been busy prototyping the mouse. Starting from version 1, I changed the design for better finger positions, and making it lighter with each revision. I can't stop myself from continuously tweaking the design. There's so many little things you can do to make it better and the work never ends. After all that, I ended up with this. Version number 5. I've hollowed out more areas to reduce even more weight, but I've kept enough thickness to prevent any major bending. The left and right click supports also have a slant profile, similar to my gaming mouse, for better ergonomics. Lastly, I added these mouse gates to make it glide better. After turning it on and playing my usual games with it, I gotta say, the hyper on lightweight gaming mouse is very true. Initially, I thought the heavier weight of my Razer mouse provided more control over my movements, but after using this, I have to say that I was wrong. Aiming just feels so much faster without losing any control, and I don't feel constrained at all. It allows for maximum mobility. Feels like nothing at all. The best part is, it weighs just under 14 grams, but I'm thinking we can do better, and I did. Introducing version 6. First thing you'll notice are all the additional holes placed everywhere. I've also added support on the bottom side for the fingers, because I noticed extra friction while gliding the mouse. And with all these changes, our new mouse weighs 12.5 grams. But wait, there's more. While you weren't looking, I custom made a new scroll wheel for our mouse, and now it weighs 14.5 grams. Hold on, we can do better. Aw oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Nice. Alright, enough talk, let's test out some games. First up is Helldivers 2, and it took some time to get used to the new lightweight mouse. That total time was less than an hour, because this mouse is amazing. Even though the mouse is missing support for the mid portion of the hand, it still feels very comfortable aiming with this thing, and I can see myself using it for hours. The only downside is that the small battery pack is around 40 milliamp hour, which means it'll last 2-3 to three hours of continuous use before you have to recharge it. Bruh. After spreading man 
Spanish democracy throughout the galaxy, I decided to hop on Valorant, and as you may know, it's a game that heavily focuses on aiming. I put on the hardest settings, and after practicing on it for some time, I was able to get a score of 16, which is similar to what I normally get on my Razer mouse. But the major difference between these two is that aiming with the lightweight mouse just feels so effortless. This right here is my favorite thing. I also tried other first person games and didn't run into any issues, and our new scroll wheel was definitely helpful. The last game I tried was my favorite city building game, Frostpunk. Now I did run into a minor issue where whenever I took my right hand off to type in the game, I had a hard time finding the mouse. Definitely a problem for those of you who shit talk all the time in Dota or League. But in any case, the lightweight mouse gets a thumbs up for gaming. So now for the real question, is this the world's lightest mouse? No, because the mouse that I've built in my previous video weighs around 9 grams. But this is the world's lightest wireless mouse, and you can comfortably use it to play Helldivers 2 for over 14 hours straight without having to worry about hand fatigue and strain. Also, this one has a scroll wheel and this one doesn't. Very important difference. So I'm calling this project a success, but I do want to make an upgraded version in a future video. One upgrade I'm thinking of is using this tiny NR52 microcontroller instead of using this mystery chip. You may have seen bigger versions of this chip on mid to high-end gaming mice like the G703 and Death Adders, and I've used them in my past videos like for this tiny mechanical keyboard and RC car projects. There are other upgrades I have in mind like making the circuit board even smaller, upgrading the mouse sensor to a gaming tier version with 1000Hz refresh rate, and of course, adding RGB LEDs. I want to thank Incogni for not only sponsoring this video, but also helping remove my personal info online from spammers. If you are like me, who had constant phone calls, texts, and emails from random companies, Incogni can help you with that. So let Incogni make your private information private again. Use my coupon code JUSTKIM for 60% off. Link is in the description. Thanks everyone for watching, and see you next time!